We are set for kickoff here. Cole Hanna puts the ball on the tee for the Tartans. He'll kick off back to receiver Orsini and Dusler for the Spartans. Orsini sliding into that return role in recent weeks in place of Ethan Dahlum, who is out today with an injury. Opening kickoff, and the academic bowl is underway. It'll be taken by Orsini at the five. He calls for a fair catch, and that's where the drive will start. Pardon me, at about the 10. And this will be where, really where the game is dictated. So if you look at Carnegie Mellon, what type of team are they? Offense, they're sixth in the PAC as far as scoring offense. Defense, however, first in the PAC, 15th in the country. They're only giving up 11.3 points per game. If Case wants to have any chance of winning this game, these are the units that it's going to come down to. Again, we touched on Ian Kipp's going to go out there and get the start at quarterback with Drew Saxon being out. Time for him to step up. Let's see what he's got. He's been nice in a, we'll say, a rotational role up until this point in the year, but really his first, you know, full go, full start on the season. Well, we'll get a bit of a different look here for the Spartans with three backs, two wide receivers. Kipp at quarterback, again, has potential to run here. And he carries forward Orsini on the handoff. And two names you're going to hear a lot tonight, and it's going to sound repetitive because they have the same last name, Robert and Thomas Corey, two outside linebackers for the Tartans out there. Between them, 22 tackles for loss in one season, which is outstanding production. So you're going to see number eight and number nine flying around out there for the Tartans defense. Gain of one on that one for Orsini. Now an empty backfield here for Kip with five wide receivers. Kip looks to the sideline. Second and nine coming up. Kip takes a snap, looks to throw far side, and incomplete. No flag on the play. Yeah, looked, it looked a little, like... looked a little early. Uh, we'll maybe get a look here on the replay, but that Tartan defense is buzzing around out there. You can see they got good energy. One of the you know more different things that they do is they'll take their outside linebacker. You saw Corey out there in coverage. They kind of bump their outside linebacker into the boundary. It's just a little bit of a different look, but good play, able to break on the ball and and gets the Spartans in third and long here. So they'll bring up third down and nine. Orsini, the lone back after being the intended receiver, lining up wide on the previous play. Kip takes a snap, looks to throw, will roll out of the pocket. He can move, but the defense covering quick. He'll throw down the sideline. Turning late is Wykowski, and the pass lands incomplete, and so that'll force a fourth and long and likely a punt for the Spartans. Yeah, and you're going to see that a lot tonight. Kip, for, for one reason or another, he really likes to roll to his right. He's a really good athlete. He's got the legs and got the ability to, to pick up the yardage if it's in front of him. But Tartan defense, and now I'm realizing Spartans and Tartans, we're going to have to make sure we're <laughs> on top of it tonight. But that Tartan defense able to, to clamp it down. And like we said, they're, they're only giving up 11.3 points per game. It's going to be tough sledding all night for the Spartans. So I'll send Joseph Rhodes back to punt. He's been a weapon for the Spartans in the field position game. The punt comes near side. Take a hop and land at about the 42 before it goes out of bounds, and that's where Carnegie Mellon will start their first offensive possession of the game. Yeah, and as we as we look at the the Tartan offense, so again, 26 26 and a half points per game, more of a balanced attack. Passing offense, they're going to be let's see, about 190 yards per game, not a ton. Rushing, 99 yards per game. Total offense, only 290. It's pretty rare in, in the college game today to see a team under 300 yards of offense and be undefeated on the season. Kind of a strange combo, but it's three, it's a three-phase game for them. The defense is really what they rely on and, and sets the offense up well. Ben Mills, the sophomore quarterback, looks to throw almost intercepted as on the coverage is Dominic, Dominic Says. Intended receiver on the play was Chris Hughes. That was a bullet. Pardon me, that was Ben Condemi, the intended receiver. I, you know, we watched Mills in warm-up a little bit. I don't know if I saw that down there. And granted, it was snowing sideways during warm-up, so tough to get a, a good read on the ball. But yeah. good play by the defense, getting second along here to start for the Tartans. The wintry mix has subsided for now. As another throw for Mills comes near side, that one is caught. And for a short gain there, going out of bounds will be... Chris Hughes. Good play by Schuster, who is, I'll say, what, eighth year senior, seventh year? Schuster's been around for a long time, one of the, the leaders on the defense at that cornerback position. So 
Now we got the Tartans in third and eight, and, and this will be a theme of the night. Both defenses are going to be able to clamp down. They, they're similar in that they're both swarming. They're going to, you know, even if they allow you to get the catch, they're going to come up and, and limit the yards after. So Mills from the shotgun looks to throw again. Near side incomplete. And a three and out for the Tartans. So the defense is ruling early here, and that'll force another punt. This time from Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, it's going to be a field position game. Looking over at, at the Carnegie Mellon punting unit, they're actually first in the conference net punting, getting 35 yards per kick. And when you pair a good, solid special teams with that defensive unit that they have, that's how they can really put their offense in a, in a good position to win. Casey Jabe, the senior, set to punt here. Lined up back at his own 30. High snap, he corrals it and sends the punt away. Nicely done. Fair catch called by Yoder, who pulls it in inside the Spartans' 25, and that's where the second possession of the game will begin for Case Western Reserve. Yeah, a little back and forth to start, and you can kind of sense whoever, whoever the first team is, it's either going to get a turnover, a big chunk play, a big field position play. That team's going to have a huge advantage from an energy and a momentum standpoint, but... You know, if I had to guess, I would imagine it's going to be a little bit of a, a feel-out session at the beginning. You're going to have to, you know, see is, is Carnegie Mellon going with something different? Is it the same defense they've played for 15 years? What does Case have up their sleeve? And again, Carnegie Mellon, first time the Spartans will see them with their new head coach in Ryan Larson. As Kip drops back, avoids the rush, trying to find an opening. He'll tuck and throw now and gets it out of bounds as he got out of the pocket just long enough to throw that one away. And so I'll bring up second and 10. And you see Thomas Corey able to, to really close him down, good closing speed. And, and when you have a guy that has, let's see, Thomas of the Corey Bunch, he's got seven and a half TFLs. You know he can really run. Yeah, much less compared to his brother, he's got 14 and a half on the season. Thomas and Robert Corey uh, in a now long line of Coreys who have played for Carnegie Mellon. I was going to say, it seems like there's been 10 of them at this point. <laughs> and they're all good. Yeah, yeah. It's a reoccurring nightmare for quarterbacks in the PAC. And speaking of, hit in the backfield, Robert Corey. And boy, that was a tremendous hit on Kip, who was trying to just, on the draw, take that up the middle. Yep. If you're a linebacker, you always want the ball carrier going backwards. And, and Corey was able to, to get that done on that play. So again, Case Western, getting behind the chains. That's not going to be a recipe for success. You want to make it easy on yourself. This Tartan defense, you can see them all crowded up at the line here. It's really going to be a pain. Who's coming? Who's dropping? It's going to be cause a lot of confusion for Kip. Loss of two on the play for Kip, so that'll bring up a third and 12. 12.15 12 to go here in the opening quarter. Scoreless game so far. One back, that's Orsini. Kip looks to throw, and he tries to avoid the rush. Slips, and I believe... Lost the ball? Let's see. Or did he hold on? Or are they going to call him down? The officials are going to talk about it as we take a look at the replay here. Oh, we got the old tuck rule coming. Yeah. And again, it comes down to was his arm going forward. The pressure was all over Kip there. And let's see what the call is. The ruling on the field is a fumble by the offense recovered by the defense at the one yard line. First and goal CMU. So a costly fumble there. And Andrew, that's what you were talking about. The two teams defensively sort of which one could, could make the big play that would turn things around. And now Carnegie Mellon and what proves or should be a defensive battle day has a chance from a yard out to potentially take the early lead. Yeah, and this is a case you, you wonder why Carnegie Mellon's able to have less than 300 yards and still win the games. Well, their defense sets them up on the one yard line. And that's how that's gonna work. So an early test here as the run up the middle and the Spartans get the stop. I believe. Yep, so a stop at about the one. Yeah, you know, it looked like they put in Joey McGinnis, the fourth there. Went with a little bit of a, a wildcat formation, packed everybody in tight, and credit to the Spartan defense, able to clamp it down. And, you know, at this point, you got to make them work for it. And there's a reason they get four downs. They're going to take all those to, to try and get it in there. But you know, Four downs, three timeouts. It looks like Carnegie Mellon will use one of theirs here to talk this over, I believe. Although it seems to be some confusion. There is no timeout on the previous play, first and 10 CMU. 
So it looks like someone tried to call a timeout. They didn't grant it, I'm guessing. So and this then, is first and 10. Yeah, they blew it dead. And once again, it'll be McGinnis. And this time he's in. So Joey McGinnis, the fourth, rushing up the middle on the Wildcat formation and getting the touchdown. And Carnegie Mellon jumps out on top early. 6 nothing the score. Let's take another look at that. Yeah, it took him two tries. And there he's, he's in. Threw his body over the top of the pack. Got just enough space to get in there. And the Tartans take the early lead. And if you're Case Western, you can't do that. You know that... The Tartans are going to have a, you know, as they've shown this year, not the easiest time moving the football from an offensive perspective, but when you give it to them on the one-yard line, almost every team in America is going to be able to punch it in like that. Hannah on the extra point. It's good. And Carnegie Mellon takes a 7 to nothing advantage. A flag comes in late, and I believe it's going to be called against Sean Torres, who seemed to have a bit of a reaction to the play. And so maybe a costly penalty to add on. After the play, the unsportsmanlike conduct, number 36 of the defense. That 15-yard penalty would be assessed on the kickoff. Yeah, it's an emotional game. It's a rivalry game. Case Western, you know, as, as we've touched on, out of the playoff picture. But so we'll go to a quick break here, and we'll come back. Case Western Reserve trailing 7-0. Break rules and spark revolutions. We ball, boss up, shatter records and ceilings and expectations. And at the end of all that, we still end up with less. Welcome back to DeSanto Field. This case, Western Reserve University now trailing 7-0 to Carnegie Mellon. And a kickoff coming from the 50-yard line after the penalty. So in a game that Coach Deblack said was going to be about field position, some early challenges to the Spartans on that. Ball will be taken by Dusler in the end zone. Just at the edge of it. Boy, that was probably placed about as well as you could yep, if you're handed there. They'll bring it out. They'll put it on the it's either the 20 or the 25. So Case Western coming out. And again, this is this is the story of the night. They got to be able to move the ball against Carnegie Mellon. They got to score points. You almost feel like this will be the, you know, whatever the first team to get to 20 is, that'll be the team that's able to come away with it. But certainly has looked difficult for the Spartans to come out and start. It looks like they're Looking to establish the pass. Not sure if that's a product of just not liking the matchups up front for the run game or if that's something they see on the backside. But definitely pass heavy. With the fumble last possession. We'll see if they stick to that or not. Three back set again for Kip. Two receivers wide. He'll hand off this time to Orsini, who came across the field. And then is swallowed up by a swarm of Tardins before a flag is thrown at the end of the play. Looked like Orsini picked up about a yard or two. Or pardon me. Uh, loss of a few there. Well, he's going to get attacked on here. Looks like we got a personal foul and time for everybody to catch their breath. Each team got one. Now we can relax and play football. Well, you spoke about After it, Andrew. Play, it's unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 40. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. You, you spoke about it, Andrew. It's a series that is so heated that they, they're going to get into it a little bit out there in the field. And in fact, you know, one of the more famous. Uh, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in this series came a couple years ago. I believe you were on the field for back in 2017. So. Yep, Luke Padell, shout out to you for saving the season. <laughs> this will be Kip on the keeper, and he's got a little bit of room to work. And pass the 50 for Kip, who has his first big gain of the day, and a first down for the Spartans. Yeah, not only his first big, but for the offense. Other than that flag, they weren't doing anything, so... That could be another wrinkle that they go with, the read option game. It's not something that Coach Debelak and Coach Slush's offense typically contains, but you gotta you got to throw everything that you got here today. First and 10 from the 49. Orsini pushes forward for a few yards. Looks like a gain of about two on the play, and that'll set up a second and eight from the 47. Yeah, and this Carnegie Mellon defense, you think it, at all three levels, it's always going to be a stout defensive line. We've talked about the Corey clan going over it at linebacker. You got Hegday there at the safety position. He's been around for a couple years making plays. And, and like I said, it's a three-level defense. They got playmakers all across the board, and, and that's how you end up only giving up 11 points per game. 
Kip with the snap. Throws it to Orsini in the flat. And he's taken down for a loss. Right back at midfield. Yep. And Carnegie Mellon's going to take that matchup every day. The, the matchup wasn't necessarily Orsini on a defensive back there. It was Coyne blocking from the wide receiver position. You had him matched up with Corey, the linebacker, and, and he's able to get off the block, make the one-on-one -on -one tackle. So, again, it seems like we're doing it each drive here, third and 11 now for the Spartans, and, and this is where they've had trouble protect, protecting Kip. Tartan defense is kind of able to pin their ear back, ears back and, and really get after the quarterback. Well, Kip will go empty backfield again from the shotgun. Looks to his right, now throws. Nice ball downfield, but a little too much air under it. Coin couldn't quite catch up to it. Two defenders on him as well. And that will bring up a fourth and 11 and bring the punt unit back out to the field. Yeah, Coach Tebelak, he'll, he'll play the field position game here. Kind of in no man's land there on the 50. You're not going to go for it fourth and 11. So they'll get Rhodes out there, hopefully get a nice little roll and, and pin the, the offense back there. The throw's a little long, but kind of the first time we've seen Kip air it out today, and he throws a nice ball. He's had a couple. I, he's usually pretty good at attacking the seams. We've seen a couple long pass plays this year, and you know when you pair that with his ability on the ground, it, it usually moves the ball pretty well. Rhodes punt fielded inside the 20. As quickly tackled is Dominic Voiland. And so the Spartans on good punt coverage there. And the Tartans will start from their own, looks like, 17-yard line. Okay, so you've seen so far, oh, we got another flag on the other side there. You've seen so far, the Spartans aren't going to have a, a real easy time moving the ball. So this defense, this is a huge chance. Go, go hunting for the ball, get a turnover, see if you can get a short During field. During the kick, personal foul, face mask, kicking team number two. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the kick. First down, CMU. Well, the special teams guys getting their licks in today. It's been ugly so far. It's been, what, third personal foul or third 15-yarder? And stuff like that can really can really change the game. you got two tough defenses here. If you're going to grant them 15 extra yards, it, it's really going to help out both offenses. So 9.49 to go in the first quarter. Pass from Mills just out of the reach of Hughes on the far side of the field. Yeah, and it was there. That play was there. They ran the jet motion, faked it, and then they had Hughes there in the flat. Mills just not able to complete it. Trying to think, I don't think we've seen a handoff yet to Vasiliadis, who's a really talented running back, coming off an injury earlier in the year. He was good. He was really good last year. So, rival game academic bowl last year was in Pittsburgh. Uh, Coach Schlackner's last game had a ton of alumni there, and, and 21 was able to really get the ball moving a year ago. There's Vasiliadis, who gets his first handoff of the day, carries it past the 30. And it looks like up to about the 34. See where they spot it. 33 it'll end up on. And so a third and nine coming up. I don't think we've had third and short for either team. Both defenses playing well early. And they, they know year in and year out, these offenses are usually pretty consistent. Gives And you know conversely, the defenses as well. So it really turns into a chess match between these two teams who can bring out something new, something they haven't seen in the last decade. So one back for Mills, and the Spartans jump, so a free play, a long throw down the field, lands incomplete, but I believe an offsides there against Case Western Reserve coming, and so Carnegie will get another shot at a third down. A chance offside, here. defense, number 20, five-yard penalty, third down. And the offside called on Marco Toth, who has been so good this year. Yeah, it's every game that we've done, it's almost a different linebacker or a different two linebackers. They all show up. There's five or six of them. Any one week, you know, like I said, one or two of them is going to have a, a breakout game. So it's really good. It's really easy for Coach Warren Miller to call the defense when he can send different guys and, and know it's going to be a positive output no matter who's going. It seemed like a real turning point for this defense this year was when they got Ryan Cabrera back at the other outside linebacker position, allowed them to move Sakalo back to safety. Really allowed them to be more aggressive is passing and taken down is Mills in the backfield. That is A.J. Dudowski with the sack. That was a great play, able to get him on the ground. Not going to call it a full coverage sack, but the DBs did give just enough time. Mills had to pump fake, and then Dudowski was there to, to get him on the ground. 
See if Case Western, it looked like the first time that they had the punt return team out there. It looks like they went for the block. Uh, if I know Coach Debelak, it's, it's usually something that he sees in film study, and if he does it once, he's going to do it again. So look for them to, to maybe come after this and see if they can flip the field. So Jay back to punt, standing at his own 13. Kick is away. Calling for a fair catch is Yoder, and he secures it up at the 45. And so Case Western Reserve again. Good field position to start this drive. They'll start at their own 45-yard line. Yeah, and we'll see. It's, you know, traditionally throughout the, the course of the 2022 season, Coach Debelak has pulled out multiple quarterbacks, sometimes multiple quarterbacks on the field at the same time. We'll see if they go to it this drive. It's usually somewhere in the first quarter. Once he lets the start, he gets settled. He'll, he'll start flipping in some different formations. Looks like Kip is going to be the only one out there. They've really been going with this full house backfield to start. Two H-backs, two fullbacks, whatever you want to call them, with Orsini in the backfield. So we're going to play the numbers and, and pick up some extra blockers in there. So with Wade and James in the backfield, fakes the handoff to Orsini. Now the throw deep downfield. That's Fromberg who gets turned around, was blocked out by the defensive back. Spartans wanted a flag, but don't get it. Good coverage there by Adrian Williams. I believe is coming off a D3Football.com Team of the Week honor his last time out. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good coverage. Uh, home crowd obviously didn't agree, but Adrian Williams, number 20, he, he's going to be the tough one to challenge. He's got five interceptions on the year in only nine games, which is, is really strong. Gives you an idea of the type of athlete and, and, more importantly, the type of ball hawk that he is out there. So second and ten. Eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Orsini in motion. Come set at Kipp's right. Now... Dropping back to pass the throw near side, caught by Fromberg, who carries it forward past the 50, up to the 47-yard line of Carnegie Mellon. There's my favorite backup quarterback. From Fromberg can come in, he can throw it, he can run it, he can catch it, and as you see here, he's going to take Mr. Williams for a little bit of a ride and, and pick up some yards after catch. And this is the first time, I've said it a couple times now, it's been third and long for both offenses. Probably the first third and short that the Spartans have had. Huge play here, got to get some momentum coming back to him. Yeah. Third and two options for Kip and Coach Debelak as the play gets called. Orsini, the lone man in the backfield, comes now set at Kip's left as the handoff comes to Orsini. He cuts through and lots of space to work. Up past the 40 to the 35 where he's taken down just on the other side of the 35 and a big run there on third and short. And the Spartans have something cooking here in the first quarter. Yes, they do. Get those chains set. They're looking to go tempo here. Keep it rolling. A uh, quick move. We've seen this a lot from Coach Debelak and the Spartans. When one play works, run it again, and they do that there with a quick handoff to Orsini. Yeah, I want to give some credit there to, to the safety. Nolan Pittsenberger, number 14. Orsini's a he's a load to take down in the open field. He's very difficult. He's shifty. He's powerful. Great play for the Spartans. That's probably only the second actual you know positive chunk play that they've had. Seemed like all the momentum was on the Tartans' defensive side, and that's a huge first down. Can't overstate it enough. So second and eight after the two-yard gain by Orsini. Again, pressure on Kip, who scrambles, looking to throw, and he coughs up the football, fumbled at the 40. Let's see who fell on it. As he was taken down in the backfield, and it will be Carnegie Mellon football. Yeah, it's a great play, great defensive play. Thought it was going to work out. Orsini got a great block on Corey coming off the edge. That swarm in Tartan's defense able to... Get in there, active hands. You know, if you're a quarterback, you got to keep. It's it's why it's probably the toughest job on the field. You got to keep your eyes looking downfield for the receiver. Consider running, and then oh yeah, you got three monsters from the D line running at you. So second turnover of the day. Thought Case Western had something cooking there on the offensive side, but like we said, turnovers are really dictated for these two offenses and in, in their field position. That was Mitchell Stokey with the strip stack for Carnegie Mellon, as the handoff this time comes to Willem Boma, who we'll see for the first time today. Andrew, we've been waiting for Willem to get in the game, and, and this is something that we went back and forth on text when we first saw that there was a running back named Car uh, Willem Boma for Carnegie Mellon. There's a former Case Western Reserve pitcher, not from the same area, who was named Willem Boma, and I badly want to know if the two are related. I don't think they are. They can't be because Case Western's Willem Boma is six foot eleven. It seems like he's probably the <laughs> tallest guy we ever had on the team, and he was a pitcher. And then you got this little stocky running back out there for, for Carnegie Mellon. So they'll go with the two-back approach, you know, splitting carries between 21 and 5, as, as we've seen so far. But 
again, this Tartan offense, they haven't really done much outside of getting the ball on the one-yard line so far. Another handoff here to Bauma. Up the middle, past the 40 to the 45, where he's taken down. One thing we haven't touched on, a real hallmark of the, the Tartan offense, each year they, they have a designated tight end that they are going to motion and shift every single play. I think it was Carl Coombe in the past. This year it looks like Matt Everett is going to be our motion all-star. So they usually bring that H-back or tight end across the formation. There's no real tendency with it. They'll do it on run plays. They'll do it on pass plays as well. Able to set up third and medium here. And again, other than getting the ball in plus, plus, plus territory, the Spartans' defense has been able to, to really put a clamp on them. So Mills from the shotgun. Baumler lined up to his left. Here comes the pass. Pressure. Mills rolls out of it, throws over to Bauma, but it's incomplete as if it hits the ground. And we'll get another punt coming up here. Yeah, it's been, you know, all the momentum in the world has been on CMU's side so far. And at the end of the day, they're punting. They're only up 7 nothing. It's still a one-score game. We've talked a lot about how, you know, the Tartan offense has struggled this year. So what does that tell me? Case Western's going to be in this game. They're going to have chances. They have to capitalize on those chances. And, and again, it's probably going to be the first team that gets to 20, in my mind, would be, would be who's going to have the best chance here. Another chance for the punt return unit, see if they can get a block, get a turnover, and and help out the offense where they can. Jabe to punt, Yoder back to receive for the Spartans. Yoder's been handling the punt return duties the last few games, calls for the fair catch there, fields it on a line drive. And that is where the Spartans will start, right at about the 23 yard line as the field position game continues. Okay, it's oh. like Groundhog Day, here we are again. It, you know, it seems like it's this familiar pattern. Again, Coach Deblack said before the game, this is going to be a field position game, and it's certainly been that so far today, for sure. Field position and turnovers. When you look at, at Case Western trying to spring the upset, and, and it, you know, given records and playoff berth already being clinched by Carnegie, this would be an upset. People around the country are watching, trying to get an idea of, of what CMU is going to do in the playoffs. And, a lot of eyes on this game, and Case Western has a chance to show, you know what, even if we're not making the playoffs, we're a tough out. We're not a team you want to play no matter what time of the year it is. See if Kip can get into a little bit of a rhythm here as he hands off to Orsini, carries it up to, looks like about the 29. And so far it's been all, all Mr. Orsini. Haven't seen Gage Dusler out there yet. A lot of times they'll switch off drives. You'll It'll be pretty apparent. You'll see the Dusler drive, the Orsini drive, and they'll flip back and forth, but so far, just, just Antonio. He's a Western PA kid, Pittsburgh kid. A lot of guys on the Case Western team are, and that's why you'll see some of the, the chirping back and forth. They've been playing against these guys for six, seven years. Ball up to the 24-yard line, so it's a second and nine, and the pass complete over the middle of the coin, who's wrapped up and carried forward. See where they give him forward progress to. Looks like it'll be past the 35, up to about the 36, so a first down for the Spartans. Yeah, and there you go. It's going to have to be both. It's going to have to be on the ground. It's going to be have to be through the air as well. And, and Kip has shown he can throw a nice pretty deep ball. It's the intermediate and the short passes that he's going to have to stay focused, take your layups, and just keep the chains moving if they're going to have success tonight. And looking for Kip to get in some kind of rhythm here. Not easy to do against a very talented defense. Another handoff to Orsini, who again has space before he's finally bottled up. The initial... Hit came from Hedgy on the play. And they look good. They're, they're starting to put together a couple chunk plays. I'd, I'd certainly say they look better than the Tartan offense so far. And, you know, that it can all be for not. If you come down here and you keep turning the ball over like they have, it's, it's not going to result in points on the scoreboard, which is the ultimate goal here. 334 clock ticking here in the opening quarter. It's been a long first quarter with both teams throwing the ball so far. Another throw comes here, off target looking for coin. And they'll bring up second down and 10. Yeah, it was there. Couldn't really tell who got a hand up. Might have been linebacker Kevin Cook. Might have been somebody on the inside. This is a big defense. You look going across. Mitchell Stokey, 250. Eric Hoffel, 6'3", 320. So they definitely got some size inside. You pair it up with these linebackers, the Corys that are able to go out there and really run ball carriers down. That's how you really you know put a lid on the offense and and get them in third long like they've shown it's, the Carnegie Mellon defense just such a great combination of size speed they really are a challenge for any team is that ball another handoff to Orsini who is starting to get into a bit of a rhythm of his own carries past 
the 45 up to the 44 for the first down. Yeah, if I had to say, okay, what play do I want to draw up for Antonio Orsini to be successful? Over the last two years, we've seen pistol formation. You're going zone concept, either right or left. Let him find the lane and go. And able to move the chains there. He's starting to feel a little bit of a rhythm. This is probably where they go play action, maybe take a shot. Those safeties are really starting to creep down. you got to prove that you can throw the ball deep. Well, and Orsini was one of the few Spartans who had success last year against Carnegie Mellon in that 24-6 loss. 111 yards and a touchdown for Antonio. As that one caught by Coyne, good job to hold on to it as he gets it up to the 36-yard line. And they are going right at Adrian Williams. I think almost every completion has been either to Coyne or to Williams, or on Williams in some form or fashion. Maybe they like that matchup. Coyne, definitely one of the bigger receivers. Williams... Although athletic and a, a ball hawking type, not the biggest guy out there, at least compared to Coyne, he's not. And we've been waiting for Coyne's breakout game, too, with such a talented receiver. You know, he's wearing the number 17, so you sort of expect him to ascend into the Colt Morgan throne, if you will, but uh, obviously it's not as easy as it sounds. But he's been a good receiver this year for the Spartans as that handoff goes to Orsini, who carries up the middle. Not yeah, much of a gain there, and it'll bring up a third and three. And looking at what the, the Tartan defense is doing, their linebackers are flying down. The safeties are in the box. You can see, I mean, just looking out there, Hegde, he's the free safety or strong safety. I think he switches back and forth. He's lining up seven or eight yards off the ball, so he is not concerned for one reason or another about the vertical pass game. At some point, Kip is going to have to prove that he can do that just to loosen it up a little bit. Four receivers set on third and three. Lone back Antonio Orsini. Ten seconds left on the play clock here. As it continues to tick down, here comes the snap with three on the play clock. clock. Quick pass over to Coyne, who catches, but nowhere to go. As once again, Williams there to make the tackle. And that'll stop the Spartan short of the first down. The offense still out on the field. Yeah, they're going to go for it. That's You've been moving the ball a little bit, and... You know, just a little bit outside of Rhodes' field goal field goal range. Let's see. I, I'm sure Coach Debs has a couple plays drawn up that he's saving either for two points or, or fourth and shorts like this. And I believe a timeout called. Timeout, CMU, they're first. So interesting. Carnegie Mellon calls a timeout. We'll take a timeout here as well. Come back in a second. Fourth and three when we return. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Well, welcome back inside DeSanto Field. 7-0 Carnegie Mellon over Case Western Reserve. The Spartans going for it on fourth and three. They're 13 of 20 on fourth down attempts this season. Carnegie Mellon has held teams allowing just eight of 17 fourth down conversions. Fourth and three, Kip with Sean Michael James behind him in the backfield. Four wide receivers set. Now James in motion. Snap to Kip. He'll look to pass. Rush comes and taking out his legs and getting the sack in the backfield there is Robert Corey again, who has been in the backfield through most of this first quarter. And a turnover on downs for the Spartans. They are blitzing, and they're blitzing a lot, and they're blitzing heavy. They're bringing two, three extra guys, and it's – it's going to come down to your quarterback making a move on, on these really athletic linebackers, and it's just not going to work out for you. So now Coach Debs has seen it. They'll come into that situation again at some point. He knows they're going to be bringing the blitz and got to get the ball out, got to make sure you scheme up the right play because if you go with that and try to have a long, drawn-out pass play, it's just not going to work out for you. You know, it's easy to forget for how much he's played that this is Ian Kipp's first career start as the handoff comes near side. Vasiliadis takes it forward past midfield and up to about the 46. That's a gain of, looks like five, and that's probably their most positive run play so far. Vasiliadis is, he's a guy you're going to feed him, you're going to get him carries. You touched on, had some injury problems early in this season, and 
looks like he's at least back to you know close to full strength. You can see the knee brace out there. Probably don't feel real good with the temperatures getting down to 35 degrees, but he's he's definitely he's a tough guy to tackle in the open field. And like I said, you got to get him carries, get him worked into the, the rhythm of the game. We'll get another carry here. Met just past the line of scrimmage. And taking him down on the play is Nate Sakalo. Nice job by Sakalo to fill the gap there. And that will do it for us here in the first quarter. So Carnegie Mellon with a short field after a fumble scores the lone touchdown of the opening quarter. They lead seven to nothing over Case Western Reserve in the Academic Bowl. We'll be back. Second quarter coming up in just a few. We do more. We step up, stand out, break rules, and spark revolutions. We ball, boss up, shatter records and ceilings and expectations, and at the end of all that, we still end up with less. Well, what looked like it was going to be a snowy, cold evening here, at least it's not snowy right now, Andrew, as we begin the second quarter. Yeah, standing out there in pregame, I thought it was going to be a, a traditional weather game. Now it's just, it's not even really that windy. I'd say normal, normal wind for being on the lake, being on the north coast of the U.S. Definitely chilly. I think it was probably 65 degrees the last couple days here in Cleveland and dipping down into 36, 35 degrees here for a, a nice Saturday night in Cleveland. But again, we touched on it earlier, a lot of action, a lot of back and forth. You look up at the scoreboard, it's only 7-0. So Case Western is finding a way to, to stick in this game. They got a third and medium here. Looking for another chance to get off the field. This might be two down territory for Carnegie Mellon. We'll see, we'll see how aggressive they want to be, knowing that they got that defense. They might look to pin Case Western back. But first things first, see what third down brings for us. Combined 39 yards of offense for the two teams in the opening quarter. This handoff to Vasiliadis, close to the first down marker, and I think he's going to have it at the 42. And then a late flag comes in. And it sounds like that one is, at least looks like it's going to go against Sakalo based on the reaction. The officials will talk this one over. They haven't moved the sticks yet. Uh, it looked like he had the first down, and then I think they're trying to figure out what they're going to tack on as well. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 16, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't like it. I don't like how much we've seen the flags thrown. It's gone on both sides. I mean, Case Western maybe has one more at this point, but it's football. It's a rivalry game. As long as we're not, and again, I'm not down on the field. I don't know what's being said, but let them play a little bit. Let them get it out of the system. Enjoy the rivalry game. Mills drops back to pass, looking for the end zone, turning around, and incomplete. Colin Schuster, the senior, knocking that one away. Schuster with a great play. So many defensive backs in that situation. They end up running into the wide receiver, don't get their head around. They have no idea where the ball is. Not him. He's experienced. It seems like he's been starting for half a decade at this point, and I think it might actually be five years, but great play by him. That's really the first time we've seen Carnegie Mellon take a downfield shot like that. You know, they're kind of in the same mindset as, as Case. They want to establish the run underneath and then try and pop one over the top there. But all credit to Schuster, again, being in the right position, having ball awareness and able to make the play. I believe that was intended for Chris Hughes, and he's another guy who I swear has been there for about seven years now. Handoff. Ciliadis taken down before he gets to the 20-yard line. They'll spot it at the 21 gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up a third down and four. So a third down and four coming up. This again, I would say, without having seen their kicking game too much in warm-ups, maybe two down territory here. Vasiliadis has shown that he's able to start getting behind that offensive line and getting three, four yards of pop. So. We'll see, I would expect run here, maybe a run pass option. Hanna is eight of 11 on field goal attempts this year is, there you go, on the near side, Mills working towards the first down, he didn't get there. And it'll bring up a fourth down and short and this will bring up an interesting question now. Do you go for it or do you try to kick the field goal here? 
Looks like Swarming they're going to go for it. Looks like they're going tempo, too. Not letting Case Western sub, necessarily. Look for a, a quick run up the middle. And it is the handoff up the middle. Vasiliadis forward, Ooh, and it short. looks like he is short. That looks short. Well, the Spartans' defense coming up big again. And indeed, it will be a turnover on down. Not even going to measure. Great job. Great job. They tried to go tempo there. They really got up the line again. Not letting Case sub in some of their bigger guys for short yardage. And credit to them. It's all about leverage. It's all about low man winning those battles. And that's huge. Again, 7 nothing. It's a one-score game. Got to oh. get the offense going. They've had first downs. It seems like the last couple drives they've at least gotten past their own 40. Just kind of in that 40 to or 50 to 30 range getting bogged down, whether it's turnovers, incompletions, anything like that. Well, and make no mistake, we've spoken a lot tonight about the Carnegie Mellon defense, but this is a Case Western Reserve defense that has really been fantastic in their last few games. Seven points allowed against Bethany, seven points allowed against Allegheny. Against Westminster, they give up 14, but one came on a short field, the other came on a, on a, uh, on a turnover. So really, it's it's been as good a defense as there has been in the PAC in the last few weeks. Yeah, I would agree, and that's that's why we're going to end up. I mean, I can't imagine there's going to be much more than 10 more points scored in this first half when we go into go into halftime here. Both defenses have shown they they know their game plan. They're going to stick to it. They play a similar style where they typically only have three down linemen, more of a three-four look, and they're going to be bringing linebackers. You don't know which two are going to come. It's usually two on any one given play, and it, it causes a lot of problems for the offense. Second down and 11 after the loss of one on first down. Deusler in the backfield, I believe, for the first time tonight. Fakes the handoff, Kip with pressure, throws over the middle. It's Nurek, but just unable to get to it, right out of his reach. That was a beautiful pass and just a little bit long for Nurek. Kip has that, it's almost a Philip Rivers-like type delivery. He's got the little sidearm and he can really sling it. I'm telling you, that's his, that throw right there is the one that he was made for. Some guys, they like throwing the comeback, other guys the fade. When he's able to rip it up the seam like that, and is just out of the reach of Nurik on that play, I think they're going to put a pin in that one and come back to it. Well, it's, it's funny because you would imagine he'd have some issues with that almost sidearm release, but he gets the ball out so quickly when he wants to throw. It's just, again, really impressive arm, just such a talent, and putting it to test today against this Carnegie Mellon defense. This blows, and the play clock play game. is fired. Offense number 10. Five-yard penalty, third down. And so there will be a delay of game there, which will lengthen this third down attempt a little bit more. And it looks like so far on pretty much every third down, regardless of the distance, Carnegie Mellon has walked up the linebackers. They'll put a bunch of them on the line, and it's your job to pick which ones are actually coming. Here we go. They're going to walk them down. We'll see, third and long, they may drop off. Well, blitz them here is... The pass over the top again, but out of bounds as Isaiah Arrington, the intended receiver. But that one well off to the sideline. And so another punt situation here as Joseph Rhodes will come back out. Well, Andrew, so far the defensive battle I think we were expecting to get today, 7 nothing, and, and really it's been a story of the two defenses. Yeah, and you touched on it. In the first quarter we had less than 100 yards of offense combined between these two teams, and they're both talented. It's talented rosters on both offenses, but both defenses have shown they're going to have the upper hand today. Good roll there on the punt by Rhodes. Yeah, that one I believe either went off the side of his foot or might have even been deflected with the pressure coming on, but it takes a favorable roll. Still good field possession here, though, for the Tartans will start on the Case Western Reserve side of the field. The Spartans, 40, where is it, 46 yard line. Yeah, and we'll go down the defense just to, to give some, we'll say names and faces to the guys that have been shutting it down so far. We got Dadowski, he's already got a sack today. Michael Kelly in the middle, Caden Tong, he's got a million tackles for loss in his career in this season. Then Toth, Torres, Trock, and Cabrera at the linebacker level. So that front seven's really been stout today and, and look for them to continue that. Mill set to pass, throws over the middle, and incomplete. That's been the weirdest thing. The two, I'd say the Spartans have been targeting Williams when they have the ball, probably their best cover guy. And then when Carnegie Mellon has the ball, they're really going after Schuster, who I would say is the Spartans' best cover guy. So, again, I said, I, 
say it throughout the year, there's a reason I'm up here in the booth and not coaching on the sideline, but interesting. They're going after the two best cover guys on, on each team, and, and so far they've they've risen to the occasion. That's why they that's why they have the reputation that they do, and I know Schuster takes a lot of pride in that, being an experienced guy and, and being one of the leaders on the defense. Ben Condemi was the intended receiver on that last attempt. Another pass attempt here. This one over the middle. That's Hughes. Did he catch it? He did. Nice play by Hughes getting inside the Spartan 30. Got the ball while he was falling down, I believe. Yeah, that was yeah. a pretty good throw. Mills is able to kind of protect him. You see DJ Wolf was kind of lurking over the middle, that free safety. And if you're a quarterback, it's easy to – well, not easy. It's a little more straightforward to complete it and hit him when he's in, you know, running in stride. But you also got to protect him. You know, the free safety's over the middle. Sometimes it works. They almost back shoulder it like that. And good job by Mills, able to complete that pass. So first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Tardins are threatening again here. Hand off to Vasiliadis, who takes it forward. Gain of about four on the play. Set up a second and six from the 25-yard line. This is where the Spartans defense, they got to step up. They got to rise to the occasion. We've seen it's going to be tough to put points on the board. Going down two scores is, is really going to make it difficult, especially with Carnegie Mellon getting the ball to start the second half. Clock ticking, 11-17 left here in the opening half. From the shotgun, Mills takes the snap. He'll keep it here, pass over the top. Hughes open, reaches up, and makes the catch in the end zone for the touchdown. Great Mills pass. just threw that one up and put it in a place where only Hughes could catch it, and he reels it in. And the Tardins now take a 13-0 lead. Great pass. Mills is coming off his back foot. You saw Case brought the heat there, brought a blitz. Mills is able to kind of just flick it out there. Hughes, who I would say has been their most targeted and most productive receiver through the pass game so far tonight, able to make that catch as well. And chance to go up two, well, already up two scores, but a chance to go up 14 here on, on Case Western. With this, with that defense, you know, they're only giving up 11 a game. That lead can start to get pretty daunting. Extra point is good by Hannah. That's the sixth touchdown catch of the year for Hughes, the 11th touchdown pass of the season for Mills. We'll take a break, 14-0, Carnegie Mellon leading Case Western Reserve. Renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen resistant rooms on the market. See to our Mediterranean style restaurant. Locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216 707 4300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. Early on here, the Tartan showing why they're the 19th ranked team in the country and undefeated on the season. They lead by two touchdowns as Hannah's kickoff into the end zone. And the Spartans will take the touchback and will get possession here at their own 25. 14 0, Carnegie Mellon with the lead. Yeah, now it's showtime. Whatever you've been sitting on all year whether it's a screen game, if you have a double pass, a reverse, multiple quarterback looks, you got to pull it out here. You don't want to give the ball back to, to Carnegie Mellon and give them a chance to go up three scores. Got to find a way to keep the chains moving. And, and most importantly, outside of that, you have to get points on the board, even if it's a field goal. Got to prove that you can score on this defense and kind of break the seal. Well, see, you feel like Kip is destined for a big play here at some point. He's come close to breaking it through, whether with his legs or his arm. And here it comes with his legs, rushing past the 25, and then gets turned around and taken down just as he passes the 25-yard line. And boy, look there. Well, he got past Corey, but then coming up behind him was Alexander Nelson, who finishes off the play. Yep, playing football when it's 35 degrees out doesn't feel great, real great. Having 71 Alex Nelson, who's 6'2", 270, hits you with a full head of steam, that really doesn't feel great. So you get Corey there to, to at least initiate the tackle and then Nelson coming up as the closer. Gain of one on the play, second and nine from the 26 yard line. 
takes a snap, looking to throw deep down the sideline and caught by Coyne on the far side. It had a little bit of a push off to create space, but it created just enough for him to pull that one in. The biggest play of the day for the Spartans. We'll get them past midfield. Thought it was clean, John. Looked clean to me. We did find out what the old vertical leap is on Coach Ryan Larson over there. Might have been a push off, and he was, I would say, rather animated trying to get the ref's attention. But end of the day, Spartans able to hit a big chunk play in the past game, and it's really been their first one so far. And again, that nice arm exhibited by Kip here so far finally pays off there on the big gain. This time throws in the flat and carrying it forward up to the 41 of the Tardins. I believe it was Riley Nurick. There's our North Royalton grad getting his requisite. Quick pass and, you know, not the biggest guy, but he's definitely stocky and quick, and that can make for a tough tackle. Two straight plays looking to go tempo and keep it moving. What is the North Royalton mascot? I was gonna That'd be like the Bears. Should, Purple should, and gold school colors, the should, Bears. Should it be the Kings or something like that? It's Royalton. <laughs> I agree, we are Royalton. Here we go. Deusler forward passed up to about the 40. And we'll bring up about a third down. And we'll call it six at the 41. This is definitely two down territory. Coach Debs knows. Down two scores here. Not kicking a field goal. Defense has shown. You know, maybe Cardi Mellon is going to put the ball on him a little bit. You got two plays to get six yards. Again, chasing points. See if the Spartans can convert a big third down here from their, the Tardins 41. Handoff comes near side. Dusler, a little bit of space to work. Past the 40, up to about the 37 yard line, and that might leave them approximately a yard and a half short. And Carnegie Mellon brought at least one safety, and you know, it looked like two linebackers. They had the right play call on. Uh, run to the outside. It's more of a blitz up the middle. Looks like Coach Deb's going to take a timeout. He knows this is a big, this is a big play. You don't want to give the ball back there on the 35 to, to Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon has shown they are going to blitz. They're bringing the heat here. They're going to take that big D line and then throw in some linebackers. And they've seen it a couple times now. So Coach Debs, Coach Slash, need to go to the bag of tricks. Not even the bag of tricks. They need to go to the offensive system that they've trusted for the last 18, 19 years here. And at the end of the day, if you want to be a winning football team, if you want to beat a team like Carnegie, you got to get one yard when you need it. Well, certainly plenty of options for the Spartans to do that. They have Deusler, who's in the game. I imagine they come back out with Deusler here. You have a few bigger backs that you could certainly bring in if you need to, or you could give Kip a chance to try to get the yard on the keeper. And so certainly some different options you could go with here if you are the Spartans. And frankly, 6-3 and three on the year, a game that you really want to win, maybe you try to take a risk and you air it out over the top too. Sure, sure. I mean, if, if you're thinking inside run game, you look at Mr. Mr. Heffel there, 97, again, we said 6'2", 6'3", 320 pounds, he's going to make it tough. First step is getting the snap clean. Looks like Kip might try the keeper here, but then he'll take a step back. Three backs, no receivers, they'll go big on the line. Kip takes it, cuts around the outside, looking for the pass, now runs, dives forward. Boy, he gets upended but gets the first down also and a tough run there for Ian Kip to get a well-earned first down. He he was met by two or three defenders. He got helicoptered. A little Josh McCown action there and watch he's the first one to bounce up. He says thank you very much that's a first down we'll keep the ball moving there so big play call I would say that was a risky play call like you touched on and and they got a yard and a half. They only needed one, but they got that extra half. Well, I, th I think they were looking for the pass on that one, and it just wasn't there. Carnegie covered it well, but again, Kip is dangerous. He's fast, he's big. And he can hurt you in different ways. The handoff to Orsini with some space to work. Cuts past the 20 and taken down inside the 20 as the Spartans now trying to get a little bit of rhythm there. They'll get up on the ball quick. Yep, here comes the tempo. They got about four plays that they can call with about one word. Carnegie trying to sub guys in. Offense didn't sub, so they can go whenever they want. They take the snap quick. Another handoff to Orsini, who tries to twist around the defense, but Stokey pulls him down. You know, the one thing I've seen, usually when they go tempo, and I'm sure other teams have noticed this, when they go tempo like that, it's almost always a run play. I know they have pass plays. There's three or four pass plays they can call. A lot of times it's a, either a quick slant or a, a quick screen. But so far tonight, it's been tempo. They're going to run up the middle. Let's well, go back to, to your days as a Spartan when it was Rob Kuda and uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob Burke playing running back. 
and they do the you know big pass for a big gain and then hand it off to Burke and he just hammer the defense that way while they're back on their hills. Pass here into the corner. Kip looking for, I believe, Coin, and they'll say he landed out of bounds. So Coin made the catch. Let's take another look at that one, see if we can see where he ended up. Beautiful pass. Yeah, I, you can't yeah, see his feet there, out. but I believe so too. Yeah, they're picking on Williams again. They like the size matchup. That's that's got to be what they're seeing over there. Williams is only five nine. Coin checking in at, at six foot four. So, I mean, you can have all the talent in the world, but well, you can see six, Coin, six inches is tough. Coin boxed him out like he was playing the post in basketball on that one too. So third and nine for the Spartans from the Carnegie Mellon 16 yard line. 7:25 left in the opening quarter. Kip drops back to pass. Throws over the middle. Pass is caught. Coming forward with it is Coin and taken down past the 10 yard line. Oh, now we got a decision. This is why Coach Debelak is has paid the proverbial big bucks. What do you do here? The Spartans yeah. have to get to the eight. They're just inside the 10 right now, so let's call it about a yard, yard and a half. Fourth and short, they're keeping the offense out there. Might as well at this point. Maybe go on two, see if you can get a freebie. So you can get a cheap first down. They're playing back, expecting it seems like a little bit of space for the pass, and so I wonder if Kip tries to take advantage of that here. Room to work if you are Kip. He will look to throw and he'll cut around the outside. Now throws, the pass is low and incomplete. And intended receiver Riley Nurek couldn't quite get to it and that'll be a turnover on downs once again. Yeah, and what, what they've shown, they're either gonna blitz or they're gonna drop back and they're gonna have number eight Robert Corey be a QB spy. So we've seen Kip, a lot of the offense has been him getting out of the pocket, being able to extend plays and pick up first downs, say, okay, great, we're gonna slap our our best, most athletic linebacker as a spy out there and make it really tough on you. Kip, as Kip. we look down on the sideline, it looks like Kip hobbling off a little bit, maybe a little bit of a, a hip stinger, yeah, hopefully he's Kip, okay. Kip was shaken coming off the field, and so that will be another storyline to watch with Saxton out already. Aaron Phillips would be the backup today. As the throw over the middle, Hughes can't hold on to it. I think he heard footsteps coming at him. We have another flag on the play here. It comes from the near sideline. Imagine the area of a hold, potentially. Or they call it an illegal block, it looks like. Yeah, so they can either decline it and have second and 10 or march it back. I would imagine it would be first and 15 if they do accept it. Case is gonna decline it, so we'll go ahead with second and 10 here. So declined. So second and 10 from the 10. This is a big field position. I'll say a couple of plays here. Now, of course, Case Western would have liked to, to get on the scoreboard, but if you're able to hold the Tartans here and pin them deep, potentially a situation you get the ball on the plus side of the field. Bauma back in the backfield for the Tartans. Mills takes the snap, hands off, and Bauma take it down. Yeah, it looks like nothing. about a loss of one, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Nothing. We're going to see the replay. I'm not sure who we're going to give the tackle to. There's probably three or four guys that could get the credit. Dudowski right there. Toth in the middle of it. Okay, third and 11, like we said. If, if your offense is having difficulty, go ahead and win the field position game. Pin the other team back there. Put the punter out there, see if he can bring the punt unit, pump block unit out again and, and really make a game changing play. But none of that matters unless you get the stop here on third and 11. Big third down play for the Spartans defense trying to get off the field again. Snap back to Mills, handoff comes, Bauma with it, just trying to get some breathing room, I think, for his punter. Maybe gets it about a yard or two past the line of scrimmage. Looks like they'll spot it at the 11, set up a fourth down and nine. And it will bring on the punting unit for the Tartans. And Andrew, you mentioned that the Spartans have been aggressive going for the block here early on on some of these punt attempts, and I imagine that certainly they'll be going after the punter, Jabe, here. Yeah, you probably come after it. Go ahead, put the punt block team out there. You tell your returner, hey, listen, you got no help. Just fair catch it. You can see where he's standing. He's got heels on the 45, so just catch it there. You'll, you'll take that from a field position perspective. Good snap. Jabe with the punt. And... Yoder will let it go and it will roll out of bounds at about the 49 yard line. And so the Tartans will begin the 
possession with the ball on their side of the field. Let's see who comes out at quarterback for them. And Kip's still out, and so Aaron Phillips will be the quarterback. Yeah, and he's going to be a similar mold to, to Kip. He's just a little bit shorter, uh, but still, he's going to be a dual threat. Freshman kid out of Medina Highland, so local guy, Cleveland product, and really ran a prolific, we'll say, two-pronged attack there for the Highland Hornets. And I mean, this is this is the biggest stage he could hope for as a freshman. So we'll see if he's able to rise to the occasion. Coach Debs, Coach Slash, they do a good job of, of coaching up that quarterback room. Takes the snap, hands it off to Orsini. And boy, I thought he was going to have a little space, but coming off the end to get the tackle, once again was Stokey, who's having himself a really nice game at that end position. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm interested to see what the halftime stats are. That defensive line and, and linebacker group is really racking up the TFLs. That's got to be six or seven of them for tonight. It seems like every couple plays, it's a different guy flashing. You know, going back to Phillips for a second, a guy who's a really talented quarterback, one of the guys that the Spartans thought, and certainly probably still think could be a quarterback of the future for them. Um, you know, obviously got clouded a bit when Kip came in, but this is his opportunity now to go in and see what he can do running this offense. Hand off to Orsini again, past the 50, and taken down right at midfield. Yeah, and the first two plays, let him get the nerves out, two handoffs, and then you find yourself in third and nine. Third and nine is going to be a place where, you know, if, if I'm drawing up a play here, I'm probably giving him maybe a rollout, give him the option. You can either tuck it and run and show off the athleticism or, or pass it. But see if they pull out here. It's going to have to be a pass play, and this is where we're going to find out what Phillips has. Three minutes, 50 seconds, and counting left here in the first half. See if Phillips can get the Spartans moving. Third and nine from midfield, takes the snap a little low, but able to get off the pass. The pass a little low as well, looking for coin, and that will bring up fourth down. Yep, it was there. Heck Day was coming on the safety blitz. Gave him decent time, decent protection. Just gonna have to shake the rust off a little bit. He'll be fine. And we'll we'll keep an eye on Kip and see if he's able to pop back in the game. But I mean you think of some teams, you see one quarterback goes down and pretty much the whole offense crumbles and, and Case is now on their third quarterback and you know, we've seen throughout the year they can play three, four in any one game and typically there's not a huge drop off. Now it's gonna be a little different going against a defense like this, but plenty of ball game left, two score game on the Spartans defense, get another stop. Hunt will land inside the 10 where it's picked up and taken down immediately. Voiland tackled as soon as he picked it, kind of realized he was in a tough spot. Best bet might have been to let that one roll one way or the other. And boy, that's Colin Schuster again, and what a day he's having. I believe that's Schuster. Is that Deusler? Uh, oh, that's, that's the Deusler. running back. <laughs> Look at that. That's a leader on the team. You get, oh, we'll call him the starting running back. They kind of have 1A and 1B between him and and Mr. Rossini, so get your starting running back and down there as a gunner, able to make a big tackle, and now th this is where it has to happen. If you're gonna get a turnover, find a way to make it happen here. You got them backed up, make it easy on your offense. I, I just like to point out that on that last punt, the Spartans had their, one of their starting running backs as a gunner, and they had their now quarterback, at least on the last drive, in punt protection, <laughs> so. Gotta do a lot here. Handoff goes to Vasiliadis, who carries forward gain of a few. We'll see where they spot it. Still inside the 10. Looks like up to about the 8 for a gain of 2. Looking at the clock, we're just creeping down, ticking just at 3 minutes. If I'm thinking of Car you know, Carnegie Mellon's approach on this drive, it's probably going to be milk the clock down. They'd be thrilled to go into the half up 14 nothing, given how everything's gone. So and probably let the clock go down, maybe run it a little more, and even if you do give the ball back to Case, it's not going to be with much time left. And they get the ball to start exactly. the second half. Yep. Ball over the middle. Contact. Flag flies. And let's see what the call is there. And I'll tell you what, they can't be calling. If they're going to call pass interference, it should be the ref that was 10 feet away, not the one that was 25 yards away. Looks like a good play by Schuster. I thought he he has every right to the ball. I'm not necessarily sure that it wasn't pass interference the other way. Oh, we got a legal man downfield. Take back everything I said. Great job by the Zebras. They won you over in the end. And how about that for a flip-flop? It took 10 seconds. 
Case will go ahead and decline that. Kind of a similar situation. They'll take the result of the play. Third and eight. Big thing on that incomplete pass there. It's going to stop the clock. Case Western with two timeouts left. If they get a stop here, depending on run pass, I would think the Tartans run it just to milk some more time off. Or at least force the Spartans take another timeout. That's exactly what they'll do. It's Vasiliadis who carries it past the 10. But still short of the first down, the Spartans will use their second timeout. And we'll get the ball back here with over two minutes left and maybe a chance to do something offensively. So, you know, again, Andrew, it's, it's another opportunity for Case Western Reserve to try to get something going here. Um, and they should have decent field position with which to do it. Yeah, the, the problem is I don't necessarily know what their identity has been today. You know, it, it'd be easier to say, well, they're really moving it consistently through the air or the ground games look really good. It's almost been drive to drive. And, you know, part of that is when you're switching quarterbacks, you got guys coming in and out. It's, it's really tough to get in a rhythm out there. But, again, I, I can't necessarily sit here and say, oh, they need to keep hammering the run game or, or hitting the seam pass. It's just been, it's been tough sledding as we anticipated. Call Carnegie Mellon probably the best defense in the in the conference and one of the top 20 defenses in the country. They're going to make it tough. They're going to get you out of your identity pretty easily. Well, and especially with the first year quarterback in there now. We'll see, Yoder back at midfield. Jabe set to punt. Hunt. Good kick. And it dies at about the 38-yard line where Carnegie Mellon picks it up. But, boy, I thought that one was going to roll a bit yeah. more. It just hit the wrong side of the ball. What was that, your sand wedge? Is that what that looked like there? <laughs> just kind of dotted it on the 40 and it, and it sat down. I thought it was going to roll, too. But look it up at the clock. Two minutes, 23 seconds left. Case Western has one timeout. Curious to see who we're going to roll out a quarterback here. Again, last drive was Aaron Phillips, local kid from Medina Highland, replacing Ian Kipp, who was out with what looked like maybe just a little stinger on his hip. And it is going to be Phillips coming out again for him. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Just saw Jace Merritt on the field kind of give a little bit of words of encouragement to Phillips. And, you know, I think if you're Coach Debelak here, you think about taking some risks here with the young quarterback. Let him try to air it out or let him try to move out of the pocket. We saw a very conservative on that first drive, handing off to Orsini on the first two plays. Here he's going to have a shot. He will look to pass here on first down, moves out of the pocket, but swarmed by the defense and taken down. That's that was tough. Evan Roper and once again, Robert Corey in the middle of it on the sack. And they're trying, they're trying to go downfield. It looks like they're gonna take him off the leash a little bit. Now the problem is you gotta give him the time to do that. Thinking a guy making the transition from high school to, to college, he can be at the biggest programs. You can have all the stats in the world. It's a different game go from playing guys that are 15, 16 years old to more or less grown men out there. And also, also they're a lot bigger and a lot faster. So it takes a couple plays to get adjusted. I'm not saying that Phillips can't do it. It's just going to have to happen pretty quickly. you got to go trial by fire and, you know, get a couple passes under your belt, make a couple layups, and, and get the confidence going. Phillips drops back to pass again. More time this time, but his pass knocked down. And again, Robert Corey, that time in pass coverage, getting his hands on it. And third and 16 now coming up. But Corey is all over the field. Oh, it helps there's two of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, able to get the hands up. And they are still spying. It looks like they, for one reason or another, they want to shut down the, the Case Western quarterback run game. So they've had a spy on. And that's really kind of, like I said, shut down maybe that rollout or bootleg package that they have. This time a little bit quicker, up for Coyne, and he can't hold on. That was Williams again in the middle of it, provided just enough contact to knock that one away. Good pass there by Phillips. Thought for a second the Spartans were going to have a big game there. Yeah, great job by Williams. He's got that hand in over the top, knocking the ball loose. That's about as good as you could do. Now he's got to be the biggest 5'9", 175 player I've ever seen. The way that he plays, and when I say that, it's, it's positioning. Okay, it's getting into the lap of the, the receiver, getting your head turned around, and then go up and find the ball. Just because you're a couple inches shorter doesn't mean you can't high point it and, and go make a play on it like he showed there. There's a reason he's got five interceptions, and I think you, you mentioned he was a national team of the week. I think it was three picks in one game their last time out. Punt away from Rhodes, and it will roll out of bounds. 
just inside the Carnegie Mellon 35. And that is where the Tartans will take possession here with a minute 17 left on the clock in the opening half. And we'll see if the Tartans try to do anything aggressive here or if they're just comfortable letting the clock run out here in the opening half. Yeah, you probably come out. Let's see, they got two timeouts. It's probably one of those situations. You get a handoff, and you tell yourself, okay, if he gets more than six yards, then we're going to go for it. If it gets stuffed, then we'll just kind of pack it in and be happy with 14 points. The old toe in the water. Sure. There you go. Is that the official football term? We could term it that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it looks like they're able to pick up six or seven yards there going through the air. And, you know, based on that, I would, I would guess that they're going to try and get points. See if they can pick up a few here. So a minute 13 left now. Not a lot of time off the clock either. Straight football came on the field on the far side. You got a minute 13 and again, two timeouts left. That's that's plenty of time to operate. Even if you go down and kick a field goal as it expires, make it a three score game, that, that would be huge knowing what they have on the defensive side. Mills takes the snap, looks to throw. Comes near side, making the catch is Everett. Carries past the 40, and they'll line it up at the 43-yard line. Clock ticking with a minute five left. Another quick snap from Mills, but a whistle blows. And that might be just getting the chains right. Yep. Wind the clock again now. As the snap comes, Mills to throw. And that one caught. That was a great throw. So Coach Miller typically, well, and it's, it's not necessarily exclusive to him, but cover two is a coverage that is really works pretty well in the end game situations. It protects the sidelines. When you see cover two, you got to make those we'll say whole shot throws where you're fitting it in between the corner and the safety. Good job by Mills, thread the needle there. Another positive play. This time, the catch made by Everett once again. And a timeout will be called by Carnegie Mellon. So Carnegie Mellon threatening here up to the Spartans 35. They call a timeout. As Everett's had a couple positive plays. Yeah, if you're the Spartans, the defense is held Pretty stout all day long. Need to just try to come up with one more stop here because last thing you want is to give the Tartans more points here heading into the half and then giving them the ball to start the second half. Yeah. yeah. This is quickly becoming a, a situation where you need to come up with a big stop here. A big stop, a turnover, something. You can't just rely on, on penalties or miscues from Carnegie Mellon. You got to go out and be the aggressor. You got to be the one that is forcing the mistakes. And again, if, if I had to guess, it's probably going to take a turnover or two here. Maybe a turnover, pick six, try and speak it into existence, something like that. But Carnegie Mellon's shown they're, they're just starting to chip away, starting to move some people up front, and you, know, you start involving Everett in the passing game, and he goes in motion 55 times a night. You should probably flip him the ball at some point to keep him relatively happy. But it's been a spread, you know, a spread offensive attack today. Vasiliadis is getting a number of carries here in the second quarter and getting the run game going. Then you start chunking in Everett through the passing game, and that's resulted in the positive positive yards that we've seen. So Mills driving his team down the field, takes the snap, one man in the backfield, now taken down. Sacked on the play as the Spartans brought the blitz. Yeah, and Caden Tong has been lurking all day. He usually doesn't take all pretty much till halftime for him to get a sack, but that's a big play. I mean, that puts him back. Looks like we're gonna be third and Wycliffe at this point, but 33 seconds left. It looks like Carnegie took their last time out, so kind of one more tackle in bounds, and, and that'll get us to halftime. But like you touched on, you don't want to give them a chance to get additional points plus getting the ball coming out of the second half, already being up 14-0. That'd be a, a significant uphill battle from there. You know, it's, it's a good time to talk about Caden Tong and what he's done for this team. Keep in mind, Caden was was essentially the person who stood it, stepped into the role that Cameron Brown left, and he's done such a good job 
of putting pressure on the quarterback, of applying constant pressure, um, you know, the tackles for a loss, just tremendous all around for Tong, who has been such a presence. And he's really the guy that if, if you're an opposing team, you have to look out for on that defensive line. That, that That's the guy you got a game plan around. Yeah, he's he's got a chance being a junior and coming back next year. He's got a chance to break a lot of records. This is second year in a row that he's been super productive from a, a TFL and also a sack perspective. And I would agree, if you're thinking about one guy to isolate and kind of shut down on a game plan perspective, it's definitely been Tom. So 33 and a half seconds left as Mills takes the snap. And again, the Spartans penetrate, but Mills escapes, throws down the near sideline. The patch is made by Hughes. And he's down to the 29-yard line if they give it credit, but a flag. Oh, yeah. And that will be a hold. Um, hold and then some, a super hold, ultra hold. <laughs> so that will negate the gain. And the Tardins, after a really successful start to the drive, now find themselves back on their side of the field with the ball in the 43. You know what kind of the funny thing is, if that play would have played out and they caught it in bounds, that was the end of the half. And look at now, it looks like Carnegie Mellon, there's about a half a second difference between the play clock and the, the game clock. So they may just either take it and take a knee or take it and, and chuck it up there. There's really no downside to it. And they're gonna reset the game clock and let it go, or the play clock, sorry. And so that will end the first half. So the Spartans trailing 14 to nothing to Carnegie Mellon here. Certainly some bright spots, but overall it's been a defensive battle between the two teams as we head into halftime.